welcome everybody again to Beyond Kicking and Punching with myself, Sunny Pabuaya, and Sifu Aldacascos. This is our second episode where we are asking Sifu Al questions. So basically what we're going to be doing is every Thursday we're going to be posting on our YouTube channel where you get to ask questions with Sifu Al Dacascos, whether it be <laughs> martial art related, whether it be life in general, or just whatever you would like to maybe learn or understand, because he is the source. And today's episode, the main question was, is Kajo Kembo dying? That was the question. So now, but before we answer that question, remember what you need to do is subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification so that this way, you know, every time Sifu Al has a new video. But before we even again answer that question, I want Sifu Al to give us a little bit of the history of where and what Kachu Kempo is and how did it kind of started. So the floor is yours, Sifu Al. <laughs> oh, you ready? You want me yes, right sir, now? You're on. Okay, there it goes. <laughs> All right. This is the, okay. There's a lot of questions come on on Kaju Kimbo, and you know we're going to take a little short history on it. Um, there's a lot of history on on the internet, and if you want to go there, you can. But just to give you an idea on it, you know the uh, Kaju Kimbo, you know, uh, they say was formed between uh, 1947 and 1949, and it wasn't called Kaju Kimbo at that time. It was called a, a bunch of uh, guys getting together and they eventually call themselves the Black Belt Society. Kaju Kembo name didn't come up until maybe uh, the early 1950s, but it would start off with five young men. They, they were all in their 20s, you know. You had uh, Joe Hope, uh, Frank Ordonez, um, you had uh, Emperor, um, you had, uh, I can't recall those names. The names are so far back, it's almost in the 40s and 50s. But these were the first original guys that were all in the they the mid twenties and young boys who are pre or say post uh, World War II. They came up with the name, um, you know, the Black Belt Society. Eventually, it was called the Kaju Kembo. Kaju Kembo stands for Ka Karate Ju Judo Jiu Jitsu, Ken for Kempo, and Bo for Chinese boxing or Western boxing. It just was one of the first mixed martial arts at that time, although, you know, nobody called it mixed martial arts because mixed martial arts never came into being until somewhere in the late 1970s or 80s, you know. Um, but nevertheless, you know, instead of calling it mixed martial arts, we like to just call it mean martial arts, which means throwing away all the rules. So we have now the Kaju Kembo, um, and then you have people that actually brought it to, to the U.S. mainland. Primarily, um, there were some that went into Southern California, but a lot of the, the instructors that really pushed it out all settled in Northern California. There was, um, you know, you had Tony Ramos, Joe Halbuna, Charles Gaylord, um, let me see, uh, let me see, Alicia Reyes, and then myself, you know. Uh, this was in the 1960s, early, early 1960s. And then Emperor naturally settled in San Diego and he developed his groups. And M Emperor, Adriano Emperor was the person that is now credited for the, uh, the progression of the Kaju Kembo system. So we bring it up to that point and that's where Kaju Kembo is and he went all over the world. Um, it developed into Kaju Kembo, uh, Kaju Kembo Kempo Karate. Basically it was, uh, it was that. Eventually went into the Kaju Kempo Tim Pai, which was utilizing more of the Chinese system, more of Tai Chi, Pak Wa Xing He, and then you get the Ta, Kaju Kempo, uh, Chuan Fa. Well, Chuan Fa means Kempo anyway, you know, uh, fist art. And it was more the Chinese version of it. So if you take a look on any of the Kaju Kempo logo, on the on the left side, you'll see the word Chuan Fa, you know, which means Kempo. And on the right side, you see the word Kung Fu. And mm -hmm. Kung Fu means skill to the accumulation of hard work and time. And the word Chuan Fa means fish way. So in other words, skill to the accumulation of hard work is in the fish way. Pretty much that's what it came out to, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the emblem. And yeah. then eventually uh, coming into the 1960, 
seven up to 1969, you know, the development of WHKD, one hop kendo, which means combined fist art. It's another way of saying kaju kembo because kaju kembo is combined fist art, but it's a, another way of doing it. You know? so, so, you know, uh, there were several people that formed the tonpai, the chonfa, and uh, the one hop kendo, and that's all segmented into sections. So when you talk about the Kaju Kempo Kemp Karate, you're talking about the first five original people, as I mentioned, Hope, Chang, uh, Holak, uh, uh, I mean, Odanez, Amparado, and uh, these people. And when you talk about, you know, Tompai, Chuan Fa, then you're talking about Emperor De La Cruz, Alfred De La Cruz in Honolulu, Hawaii. He, he was the one that helped with Emperor with the Tompai and Chuan Fa. I was eventually brought in. I was the bottom of the totem pole. <laughs> uh, coming in, the youngest one, they come in. And then it was developed into, eventually when I came into the U.S. mainland uh, back in 1965, then up to that part there, then we begin to start developing the WHKD, uh, it's called One Hop Kendo. So that's pretty much the history of the Kaju Kempo. Short version, the long version, it's, it, it goes so many, and there's going to be many different interpretations of it. Yes, exactly, Siku. So now the big question Siku. i mean people are asking because i know it was on the news and on social media people are asking is in your opinion is kaju Kempo dying yes and no okay. it's a really complex i i uh, thank for that you know uh kaju Kempo is actually the, the original mixed martial arts you know um, now, if you practice Kaju Kembo in a sense of the static version, which is, you know, like, you know, the traditional straight punch and things yeah. that way, well, it's kind of monotone. Uh, I don't say it's dying because you take a look at um, a lot of the good MMA fighters, they had all had Kaju Kembo background. Yeah. You know, uh, you had people that came out of, um, I forgot his name now, he's really, really good. Okay. Um, from <laughs> give me the name you know he, yeah. he this is uh damn he's right on the tip of my tongue but he, he, he John, was one of, I, I come in. yes these are all called kaju kembo people and you know and they and yeah. they are mma you I'm see nervous. so they just they just took the street version and they put it into into the into the ring and those he he, had, he ended up building up a very a, a very good strong stable of, yeah. of, of full contact uh, fighters, MMA fighters. I mean, but the yeah. background is a lot of the background has MMA because after all, you know, Kaju, Kaju Kempo already has it. It has the judo, it has the jujitsu, the karate, and you have the and uh, the, the the boxing in there. So you know, it's there. You know, so so that it's the it's the well, street version version versus the uh, the ring version. So version. it's not dying. Um, it's really complex. Yeah. People ask me that all the time. Is it dying? And I would say that I would say yes in one way and no in another way because you have a lot of people that say that, that they Kaju Kembo, but they're really not Kaju Kembo. They come from different systems and and you know they either promote themselves as Kaju Kembo instructors or we got some you know rogue uh, instructors that go rogue and they decide that they want to promote people in Kaju Kembo, they come out from uh, another, you know, jujitsu style or or maybe no boxing or no nothing, just just from white uniform to black uniform and all of a sudden they become Kaju Kembo. Yeah, it's a dying in that sense because they are not promoting the real, the real essence of Kaju Kembo. Yes. You, know, uh, you, you have to know the, uh, you know, a certain amount of forms that make it legitimate so you can actually recognize the forms as mm -hmm. being Kaju Kembo. But when we look at some people that has no background at all, but yeah. still wear the Kaju Kembo, uh, Kaju Kembo sign, then yeah, it's dead. It's dying because that's phony. It's fake. It's not real. You yes. see, and there's a lot of them. And, but there are a lot of good legitimate Kaju Kembo people. And yes. these are the ones, you know, you got to find. And it's pretty, pretty difficult because it's, um, it's like an, a small group of Kaju Kembo black belts and, and grandmasters versus the whole bunch of other people that are not really, you know, those those people. <laughs> I don't want to say, but you you understand what I'm talking I about. Understand yeah? completely. Right. Sir. You 
you'll find you'll find like 40% legitimate and 60% just all over the place yes. and it continues you know, because you can't and in that aspect it's dying that part on the other part the the, the real Kaju Kimbo people you got people like you know uh, Grandmaster Gary Fulbach you know, Kenji and uh, Rick Kenji and uh, you know people people like uh, Tam Allred and people that come out from the first generation of Northern California black belts, you know who they are. Mm. And you got the Charles Gaylord's group. I mean, they've got a lot of great people. Mm. And these are the legitimate, the legitimate guys, you know. But yeah. uh, you have to do a lot of homework on it. So you, on, on that part, you can distinguish. And naturally, some parts of the Kaju Kembo system just want to stay very, very traditional. Yes. And it's not dying. It's just, it's just there. When I say that if Kaju Kembo dies, it's because they forget the essence of uh, the, the integrity, honorability, uh, integrity, and what it was meant. And when you call it in a Bushido sense, you know, for the honor. And when you say it's dying, it's because they don't practice that part. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't understand that it's a God-given art. Yes. And when they throw respect out of the way, then yeah, everything begins to die. I mean, I hate to say it, but a lot of the part of the country is, you know, with, with the lack of respect, integrity, and and you know, respect for others. I mean, yeah, then it, it then it dies, yeah. yeah. But that part is Kaju Kembo dying? No, because it's very active. Yes. You find the right people. Yes. They're active. You go into the wrong crowd, the circle of influence. Yeah it's dying and, and preferably i would rather see that part die because mm -hmm. they they're not representing the true essence of kaju kembo anyway it's here it's here in the feeling the way that you feel you know a lot of people just say yeah yeah i take kaju kembo and they wear the belt on the head uh, no you don't wear it there i mean i mean the belts are only used to wear you to, to keep your pants up and you all know that <laughs> yes sir Ooh, wow what else can i say I know it's a it's a heavy subject and everybody I guess is has their own opinion on it and stuff. So the best thing to do is like you said, do your research, right? Do your research because you can tell, you know, what each school kind of represents and and how they teach their students and how their students perform and that. So it yeah. Everybody it's, just has to do their research when it comes down. It's, it's, it's all going to be on personal perspective and sensibility, the way you feel about it. Yes. Uh, because, I mean, I get very sensitive when it comes to to people knowing, you know, uh, Kaju Campbell. I mean, they got to be, for me, you got to be able to fight your way out of a paper bag, not with a chainsaw. And uh, there's a lot of a lot of them that, yeah, they got this rank and so forth. But I put it, put it where it is. I'm, a lot of you see me when I'm, See, I'm doing seminars. Sometimes I don't even use my uniform. I don't wear a belt because, I mean, I train the way that it's going to be. Train the way you fight, fight the way you train. And if it's not going to be out on the street, you know, I don't have time to take my shoes off, put a belt on and put a uniform on. It's just going to happen. And chances are any kind of attack is not going to be static straight where you know the opponent. It's yeah. going to be blindsided ambush attack. That is the way that it's got to be. And yeah. the only way that you can say that you're a good martial artist is to practice ambush attack or element to surprise and basically that's all martial arts is i mean you know the other guy don't really know what you're doing and if you've got the, the upper hand of having the martial arts then then you got yourself an ace in a hole so to speak yeah so i guess in in reality i guess kaiju kempo is still progressing it's always progressing right just like right. how you ended up forming one hub kendo right because it's progressing and that's why that that's how you started One Hop Kendo, is that correct? Yeah, One Hop Kendo is one of four major sections out of the Kaju Kempo system. Kaju yeah. Kempo Kempo Karate, Kaju Kempo Tonpai, Kaju Kempo Chuanpa, Kaju Kempo One Hop Kendo. And the later, you know, One Hop Kendo was, I saw some elements within Kaju Kempo within the uh, part, which were very, very good for the beginner, the drills and so forth. But I wasn't thinking that way. I wasn't thinking back in the 1960s or 50s or, 60s or 70s or 80s, I was thinking a bit about a little bit more progressive way of, of fighting. And I think I changed was because 
I was heavy into competition, whether it would be point contact, semi-contact or full contact or anything goes. It made me put the reality that people out on the street are not just going to be throwing straight punch and one punch at a time they're going to be kicking punching especially you got a, somebody that's totally crazy you know yes. all the techniques in the world is not really going to be working so if you're working right hand if you're working like technique number one that is certain combinations that you do unless the person comes with a straight punch you go, it's going to work but if it comes with a roundhouse punch or left punch or hits you from the back of the head that's not going to work you, your principle has got to work on totally different thing it's like like in what i talk about people you know what it says i go on a, what i call a three five five method of teaching which mm -hmm. is pretty much prevention protection evacuation one two three prevention protection evacuation and drill from that sense sense of word and then i go into the next word which would be aware be first be fast hit hard and don't stop so if you come up with that and you take that into a philosophical way or into a physical fighting way it doesn't matter then you have the three and the five and it makes it easy. Besides that, three, five, five, three words, everything is three anyway. I'm, I'm going to say this over and over, like 911 is three words. Everything that you say, like, I love you, I hate you is three words. Mm -hmm. So it makes it easier. So when you practice things in three and five, it's easier that you have the combination. Once you have the, that, yes. that there, then you can add three, you can add seven, you can add, you can add, add all kinds of things, but you got to have the first three, three targets, three weapons, and then go up to five and then seven. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Yeah, we could go all day on it, but with the limited time, we can't, not right now. I'm pretty excited because I know for a fact that you've actually been booked for your first seminar coming up soon from your major surgery, which is coming up, I believe, on April 22nd. 23rd. 23rd. Yeah, 22nd, 23rd. 23rd 20, right. In Salt Lake City. So. Right. Can you elaborate on that? Because uh, who's hosting it? And and then if they want to get more information on it, because I'm excited because I myself is going to make sure I, I make it down there because, you know, it's always great to watch you live because, yeah, you can see it on video. You can see all the action, but it still doesn't it doesn't feel the same when you see you live when, with all that energy. Well, they're, they're going to be a lot of grandmasters doing segments in it in this two day, two day yeah. uh, extravaganza, so to speak. Uh, the promoter is by the name of Sam Ellis. You know, he's a very good um, uh, instructor uh, out in Salt Lake City. We're going to be interviewing him a couple of months down the road, but and, and along the way, we're going to be talking more about this seminar. Yes. and meeting it is like the meeting of the grandmasters grandmasters yes. coming out from different organizations mm -hmm. and what better way to learn is to learn from this elite and legitimate grandmasters that come into one place that would be the ideal place there's, there's a lot of grandmasters that are grandmasters we won't be able to have all of them and eventually we will Mm -hmm. And I don't know how many grandmasters we have coming in, but you know, there's going to be taken up Friday and Saturday. Yes. And for those that wish to stick around on Sunday, we're going to have it too. That's going to be um, April 22nd and 23rd in Salt Lake City over at the Marriott. We're going to be coming up with more information to give, give you. And I'm really excited. I'm also going to be one of the major speakers talking about certain elements on the martial arts that I think is going to be pretty interesting too. You're on the men's and now you're getting booked. And if anybody else is interested in booking you, is there an easier way of getting a hold of you or should they what, email you or they, well, can, they can get in touch with you? Well, Sonny, yeah, they can get in touch with you. They can get in touch with you or they can get in touch with the website that we have, the cosmicmartialarts.com and the other one that we have under you, Sonny, and uh, we can put it all down there. We'll, we'll have all that ready for them. Okay. That, that would be great. Terrific. I'm excited. And then what I just also noticed, what was it? I think, was it yesterday or the day before you've been inducted to uh, a Hall of Fame or another Hall of Fame? <laughs> I, I, I vaguely remember it because, you know, it's sometimes things get busy and then something scrolls on your social media. And I saw a quick picture, but I had my wife telling me you got to do this and that and so i didn't really get a good look of it 
Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I don't know. I can't keep track. I've, I've been being given so many awards over the years, and this one came a couple of days ago, also with uh, Ron Van Cleef, my partner in crime here in Hawaii. We put together what the Ultimate Warriors uh, Hall of Fame, and afterwards, people started recognizing us also into different Hall of Fames. I can't recall, but I'll post it on so you can see which Hall of Fame that was. I have to make sure I have the right one because I get too many of them. Uh, yeah. uh, I couldn't even put it on my wall as, as that it, it would take up a whole wall going back many years. I'll post it up on it. I can't recall which one it is, but I'll show you which one it is. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it anyway. Terrific, Sifu. I mean, again, we're running out of time. Uh, I just want to remind all the listeners who are watching this session or episode, whatever you want to call it, with Beyond Kicking and Punching, if you've got any questions you want Sifu Well to ask, comment below on this uh either on this YouTube channel or on the social media where it's being posted. And we'll make sure Sifu Al replies to it and lets everybody know who's asking. Because, you know, it's always nice to give recognition to the people who deserve recognition. Again, don't be shy. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the notification so that this way you get notified every time Sifu Al is on. Before we finish it off, Sifu, do you have any, I guess, inspiring word or things that will get people going when it comes to maybe training or just be happier in life? Oh, well, there's, there's a lot of inspirational things we can talk about. Sometimes I'll just say this, you know, leadership is you got to have balls to, to be a leader and you got to make the right decision because you make the wrong decision. Yes, that's going to hunt you for the rest of your life or the right one. Then, you know, people would praise you for courage. So, you know, leadership comes with a lot of things and making responsibility, taking about accountability. Some people don't have that and they are pretty much followers and a leader's got to be able to really take a really, really good balance. I like to say that when taking a good balance, sometimes it's pretty difficult. One of the things I tell people a lot is people remember uh, President Eisenhower in 1947 when he was, was the president of the United States. And we're talking about the politics that was going on. And it's also here in the United States right now, going on with everywhere. Hmm. And he had said that something that I've always remembered, and I hope you guys can remember this, yeah? Hmm. You, if you are too much on the left, too much on the right, you're in the gutter, okay? Mm -hmm. So that means be balanced. Yes. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. It does. All right. Yeah. I mean, be be balanced, you know, because it's pretty hard to be a, a diplomat and a politician. Yes. Some people get too much on the right, too much on the left, and they're in the gutter. And it's not good. No, it isn't. Okay. Well, again, thank you very much, Sifu Well, for answering those two big questions to start with. Again, reminding everybody that Sifu Al does have his book out on Amazon called Legacy. So if you want to know a little bit more about Sifu Well, I'd highly recommend you order the book on Amazon and then read up on it and then from there you might actually even have more questions and so next time we're going to actually have Sifu Al talk a little bit more of stories of I guess some some training some fights and whatever else so I would recommend make sure subscribe get notified so that this way you'll hear maybe one of his exciting fights in the ring or out of the ring all right that's right one thing i want to mention that i've got about i've got a few copies here of my book and if some of you want to have an autograph copy just uh just write me and let me know that you would like to have an autograph copy of it then send me your name address and so forth and we'll make arrangements and i'll sign it and have it sent out to you yeah. as long as it's in the united states you know, if you if you're on the moon or in in somewhere in south africa I, I don't know it's it's pretty expensive okay so other than that guys i welcome you to this uh podcast that we have we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of things do not hesitate to ask me any kind of questions and if i don't know it then i'll find the questions uh, the answers for you but you know 
<laughs> whatever way I can help you progress yourself, whether it's going to be life coaching or in the martial arts or even cooking. I just <laughs> cooked myself some real good Hungarian goulash or, 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 or beef stew today, slow cooking. I enjoy cooking. I mean, some of you guys have seen my son Mark on on uh, uh, Iron Chef America, you know, <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, so we're always talking about cooking. So anyway, guys, nothing else. Then I, I, I guess we're going to see you on the next one. You guys enjoy yourself right now in Hawaii. We're just going through some thunderstorms. And in Canada, again, again, <laughs> we go the Canadian ducks. <laughs> All right. All right. Until then, mahalo. take care, guys. Aloha. Mahalo. God bless. And have a great holiday season. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.